Welcome to Safety Tavern's video on workplace violence. Again, I love experts, and let's bring in some experts. This is the a video that I that I pulled from the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department, and it's a video that they got from the Houston Police Department and Homeland Security. So let's get right to it. Hi, I'm Sacramento County Sheriff Scott Jones, and I know many of you, in light of what's happened here in California and elsewhere, are concerned about incidents of workplace violence, specifically shootings in your workplace. Now it's important to know that the odds of a shooting happening in your workplace are very remote. Nonetheless, there are things you can do prior to or during an incident to help maximize your chance of safety and survivability. The following video was produced as a collaboration between the Houston, Texas Police Department and the Department of Homeland Security. And it's my hope that it will generate discussion as you go back to your workplace with you and your workmates so you can develop a plan for both prior to and during such an encounter if it occurs. Remember, you don't have to be a victim and you are not powerless. And it is my hope that this video empowers you to increase the chances for your own safety and survivability should such an incident occur. And lastly, if you see something, if you see something or have an instinctual feeling that something may affect your or someone else's safety, then let your local law enforcement know. You're not bothering us. This is what we want you to do. If you see something, say something. Thank you for watching this video. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. 
silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight, act with aggression, improvise weapons, disarm him, and commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Now, there is a whole other video that covers emergency action plans, and I agreed this video could have easily been put on that place, on that site, but this is the worst case scenario of workplace violence. So it was more appropriate to put it on this video. All of this being said, workplace violence is encompassing. It is from all the way down from worksite harassment, leading all the way up to actual one employee killing another. And these things happen in real life on real job sites, so they, they're, they're, they go all over the place. Harassment can be defined as aggressive pressure or intimidation, or a course of conduct which annoys, threatens, intimidates, alarms, or puts a person in fear of their safety. The next escalation up is threatening. Threatening it can be defined as having a hostile or deliberately frightening quality or manner, or expressing or suggesting a threat of harm, danger, etc can also be described as behavior involving physical force intending to hurt, damage, or kill someone or something. I do not know exactly what company you specifically, every person who's watching this video is working for, but I can tell you every single company that I've ever worked with, including the one I'm working for right now, because I'm, I'm still currently employed while I'm doing this, and they've been gracious enough to let me put these videos out. Um, every single company that I've ever worked for in my entire life has had the exact same human resources policy, and that is workplace violence we have a zero tolerance for. So I am going to, I'm gonna veer a bit away from OSHA and, and speak from the experience that has been put in me by all of the companies that I've worked for in the past and current, and that is zero tolerance. Sexual harassment is a zero tolerance situation. Harassment is a zero tolerance situation. Threatening people, zero tolerance situation. Fighting, uh, even horseplay that gets carried too far, zero tolerance. If these things happen, you need to notify your supervisor or I can tell you, again, every single company I've worked for, they've all had the same open door human resources department policy. And that is, you can always call human resources and make a complaint. Listen to me. If you are being harassed at your job site, you need to do something about it. That is not acceptable. Supervisors, if you have employees that are harassing each other at the job site, you need to stop it. Do these people work for you or not? 
because if they work for you, they're under your direct domain and you are allowing a potentially hostile work environment to continue. Now, when I came into the biz, as well as, <laughs> as, well as back in the military, there was a thing called hazing. And the new guy would always get a bunch of crap. Understand it. There's a difference between making the new guy earn his stripes, which is a horrible term from the military, but there's a difference between making the new guy earn his stripes versus harassing him or her versus putting somebody through something that is genuinely just not acceptable. It's not professional. If you want to be a fraternity boy or behave like a fraternity boy, then you need to go be a fraternity boy. But if you want to behave like a working professional in construction, you need to behave like a working professional in construction. This is, I don't care if you are the owner of a company, if you're a division manager, if you're a superintendent, if you're a foreman, if you're a greenhorn new hired guy yesterday, behave professionally. These are not your best friends for life, although they could be, but these are not your best friends at the job site. At the job site, these are your coworkers. You should not be sitting there smoking, joking, carrying on, throwing hammers around, playing jokes on each other. Prank. You're here to work, right? And if you're here to work, shouldn't we behave like we're at work? Now, I, I love a loose work environment as much as the next person. I do. But there is a place where you cross a line, where you have brought your personal opinions, you've brought your personal activities, your personal, you brought your personality into your job. And that is unacceptable when it gets to bad points. It can easily get into threatening. It can easily get into making the new person, you know, the one that you don't think has a whole lot of merit, make that new person feel like this is a hostile work environment. And that is unacceptable. It is not, there's no person in the world with any kind of intelligence. And I'm, let me get closer. There is no person in the world with any kind of intelligence that's going to tell you ruling people by fear is a good idea. It's just not. Treat people with respect. Supervisors, if you treat your employees with respect, I promise you, maybe not on this job, maybe not right now, but I promise you throughout the course of your entire life in construction, you will reap the rewards of that. Supervisors, if you treat your, all of your people like crap, you're always mean to them, you're always being hostile with them, you're, you're, you're giving out idle threats or even passive aggressive threats, and you wonder why nobody wants to work for you? You wonder why your people call in all the time? You wonder why they keep job hopping from one construction site to the next? Well, these people, they just don't understand what they're doing. Uh, they ain't like we were back in our day. Yeah, you know who you are. If that's you, look at yourself. I'm not sitting here giving you a, a preaching message that comes from, well, that's, that's a safety person that's sticking their nose where it don't belong. When you create a hostile work environment, that new guy is not thinking about or girl, is not thinking about the work that they're doing. They're thinking about the fact that that, that they just got yelled at and they don't even know why. Or uh, uh, they had a, a, a molehill turned into a mountain by their supervisor who's just giving them a bunch of crap and bam! That's when the bandsaw slips and cuts off their finger. Creating a hostile work environment, a bad work environment, because of your personality, right? creates more injuries. It is 100% directly tied to safety. What were you thinking about? Well, uh, me, and, me and my other coworker, we got into an argument today and I was thinking about that and that's when I slipped off the ladder and broke my back. Indirect cause. What was the employee thinking about? Create good work environments. As an employee, as a coworker, as a supervisor, as the owner of a company, division heads, create productive healthy work environments, and you will reap the rewards of that. I tell, I promise you. All right, I'm going to dip just a tiny bit into equal employment opportunity. So the EEOC, and yes, as much as we all love our EEOC briefings, and, and I've had a gazillion of them, we are going to focus just a little bit on some of the things that they're saying here. Harassment is unwelcome conduct that is based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, age, disability, genetic information. To be unlawful, the conduct must create a work environment that would be intimidating, hostile, or offensive to reasonable people. Offensive conduct may include, but is not limited to, offensive jokes, slurs, efforts, 
or name calling, physical assaults, threats, intimidation, ridicule, mockery, insults, put downs, offensive objects or pictures, interference with work performance. Harassment can occur in a variety of circumstances, including but not limited to, and it goes into a list. You can, if you want to look more into this, I, 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 I applaud you. Go dig into this. In the end, be nice. Be just be be a nice person. If you are just being a nice person, you're you're trying to be kind, you're trying to be respectful, you're trying to be if you're being that, and I don't mean walking up next to somebody and giving giving their shoulders a rub and saying, You're doing so good today. You're doing such a good job. Man, I've seen supervisors do that to some people, and I'm like, what are you doing, dude? You are a walking lawsuit. What is wrong with you? You're creating a a, a tense work environment. And again, what is this person thinking about while you're doing this stuff? They're thinking about you and what's going on instead of thinking about their work. And that's when injuries happen. Stop it. Stop all of it. You're at work. Act like you're at work. Pretty simple. More from the EEOC, the employer liability for harassment. And there's a whole bunch of good stuff in here. But let's jump down to the employer will be liable for harassment by non-supervisory employees or non-employees over whom it has control if it knew or should have known about the harassment and failed to take prompt and appropriate corrective action. If you see, and you're the employer, if you see harassment, you have to do something about it. Employees, if you see, or if you are the subject of harassment, you you need to tell your supervisor. If your supervisor, potentially if your supervisor is the offending person, tell it, call your HR department. These are not acceptable practices in 2020. They may have been back in the 1800s where some of these habits were learned, but I, I, I'm sorry, rules have changed. And if you don't like the rules of construction, get out of construction. Get there, there are plenty of countries around the world where those kind of activities are absolutely okay. America, right? The home of the free, brave, you know, place where people died to defend. America is probably not the place for this kind of activity. Construction is probably not the place for this kind of activity. You may need to look at changing your jobs, or it may be even your country. If this is who you are, you may need to you may need to change yourself, including your location. I hope this video finds you well, and I'll see you in the next one.